Hickok 45 here for a long time if you wanted a 44 Magnum you got one of these probably a model 29 Smith & Wesson yes big bore 44 mag from 1955 on up and uh, the 50s 60s 70s most of the 70s I guess this was it 44 mag but guess what Colt jumped right on that in 1990 <laughs> and they made one too the Colt Anaconda which you probably see in the title and that's what we're going to feature today thanks to Simpson Limited out of Galesburg Illinois lent us this sitting out to us these are pricey these are expensive as you know if you know these firearms at all the Anaconda was only made for I think as a production gun for about nine years to about 19 from 1990 to 99 I think and then it was available through the custom shop for a few more years but that was about it and uh, it's a big old behemoth 44 mag you want to just shoot it let's shoot magnums you know too it's a cold coldish day and there's nothing like shooting a magnum on a coldish day it just feels good on your hands <laughs> If you've ever done this before, you know I'm joking because it hurts more. So let's shoot something really quick here, like that. Boom! Oh, I got the pot wet. Maybe it'll still smoke. <laughs> Big doggies. How about a bowling pin? It's empty. Anyway, yeah, the Anaconda came along a little late and uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> Big old boar, no doubt about it. Before we shoot at him, but uh, I guess I won't fire him today. Uh, you know, they've not been in controlled in a controlled environment. But you know, my experience with with uh, ammo is, is even when it's not in a controlled uh, air conditioned heated environment, it seems to do pretty well. You know, it's it's better if it's in an air conditioned uh, heated area. But uh, anyway, thought I'd bring it out. The old vintage ammo. I started to make a big deal about how Federal's got some new ammo, and they changed their boxes. <laughs> it's funny. And the prices are funny, too. $16.99. Go buy a box of jacketed 44 Magnum ammo today for uh, $16.99. Good luck with that, right? So anyway, the Anaconda, like I said, about 1990. And, uh, and up until then, now you had other choices. Of course, uh, we had what? What we? I had a, a single-action uh, Super Blackhawk Ruger, actually, in the 70s. Had my Model 29 Smith and Wesson in the 70s. I had uh, what else? Well, I didn't have them necessarily. There was, I think Dan Wesson made one, and and then Ruger, I think, came around around 79. Is that right? The Red Hawk, somewhere in the, in the late 70s or 1980, I think, with the Red Hawk and 44 Magnum. So, the, uh, as you know, the, the Smith was out in 55, and you know, it had its following, but it really took off when, yeah, you know, don't you, when Clint Eastwood came out as Dirty Harry carrying that thing, okay? Anyway, hey, we're a Mountain Dew ad here, aren't we? Let's put that over there, okay? Uh, so... Ah, uh, 55, you know, it was a long time. If you wanted a 44 Magnum, you didn't have this option. You just didn't. Colt was, was really slow. I don't like to use the late to the game phrase, but they really kind of were because by the time 1990 got here, everybody was more involved in the polymer pistols and things like that than they were in a 44 Magnum revolver. Now, they were always popular and they're still popular, but uh, they, they really missed the game. Uh, I remember back in the, I'm a load while I'm talking. I, I remember back in uh, the 70s, we used to sit around talking about it, how when is Colt going to chamber their python in 44 Magnum, you know, or the trooper or anything? Uh, and especially the Colt aficionados of the day, back in the 70s, it seemed like everybody was Colt or Smith and Wesson. And it was revolver, the revolver heyday. And there was just a lot of frustration that they did not have a 44 Magnum. And as, as per usual, they were not that receptive to what uh, folks were asking for in the commercial market. They were so occupied with the military contracts, and that's kind of been the history of Colt, I guess. Uh, so it took them a while, didn't it, to get around to it. Since we've got a Magnum here, I see a water jug needs to be hit. Oh, man, <laughs> I had some other targets there. What happened to them? <laughs> 
I'm going to get this orange guy out of my face. Woo! And that green guy. <laughs> well, we put one on the gong or a couple over there before we get too far afield here. And I not moved the sights on it, and I think it's close to right on. I don't know. Boom, got there fast, didn't it? Let's try that buffalo. Bison. Boom, 44 Magnum. Took him over. We got one round left, so Kentucky two liter, it is your turn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a good looking revolver but it's not necessarily a python, right? Before I talk more about that, let me remind you, speaking of precious metal, look at that. That are some stackable 10 ounce uh, bars of silver from Atmex.com. We appreciate their support. You can get bars, you can get coins, Nimbusmatic or bullion, all kinds of cool stuff. Those happen to be stackables. So go to our link in our description and check it out, please. Appreciate their help. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it looks like a python, but it's really not. It's more of a blown up trooper or king cobra with a rib barrel, okay? So if you decide to fork over the big bucks for one of these, and they're expensive, they weren't made that long, they're not that available, uh, they run over 2,000, okay? Maybe, you know, two to 3,000, and they're not really the python quality. They, uh, I mean, they're fine, but uh, so don't be misled by the rib barrel. But, but they're a nice gun, okay? They're a big old thing, not really meant to be a carry firearm uh, or a duty firearm for police or anything. They're more for hunting, uh, just doing what I'm doing, shooting on a shooting range. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I think a lot of people do that. I've been known to do it a little bit, right? So that's mainly what they're about. Uh, and uh, this one seems fine. It, it, it seems pretty tight. I don't think he's been shot much. So I've uh, cleaned it. I cleaned it uh, a couple of times. And uh, it was even not wanting to close when I cleaned it. It's just really tight. Okay. So it seems to be doing fine. And uh, what else about it? They were available in 4-inch, uh, 6-inch, and 8-inch. There were a few, very few, I think in 5 and some things like that. And uh, what else? It was chambered in 45 Colt later. I think 93, they started chambering in 45 Colt. And uh, it's, it's one that I never, never did really have a, a, a big desire for, for some reason. I was like, you know, I had several pythons, you know, and recently I even bought a new, uh, an old one uh, again. So I could, I, I liked the python and I liked the looks of this, but I was just never drawn to it uh, that strongly. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not sure why. And, and you know, even today I like it okay, but it's a big old gun, and I think the Smith feels better in my hand. If I could get some better grips for this thing, I'm not crazy about the grips. And then these are the original. I think most of them came with, with those rubber grips, the Colt Medallion, but I don't know. They, they just don't uh, feel as good for to me for some reason. But anyway, big old gun, 44 mag, and it's a Colt, and it pleased a lot of people who had been wanting one in 44 mag. So what we, let's try a couple of specials. Well, let's try a couple of my hand loads just for kicks, too. Yeah, kicks. All right, that's funny. And uh, then we'll go some specials, maybe. I don't know. And, you know, and that's a thing. 44, any revolver cartridge like this is pretty versatile. You can load your own recipe. You can get specials. And uh, just, just whatever you want. Uh, but it's got some weight to it, so it's pretty, uh, pretty nice as far as recoil. Boom, Mr. Cowboy. <laughs> let's try, uh, let's try that ram over there. Sheep. Oh, popped him. Okay, let's try these two liters here now. These green ones. Did he shoot five or what? Did he shoot five or did he shoot six? The cowboy will tell us. <laughs> Have one left. Dead center for him, right? Uh, or her. 
Here I go. I'm always assigning gender. I apologize. I really do. So what else did I not tell you about it that you're dying to know? I'm not going to shoot it too much. Uh, it's an expensive gun. Kind of a collector's firearm. And will go to somebody that the uh, deals are, you know, from, you know, from Simpson Limited, like I say. It'll go back to them. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's, uh, as I understand, I was doing some reading on these, and that when they first came out, they were they they were considered very inaccurate for some reason. They changed the barrels. That's the word I got. And then then they uh, had a reputation for being very accurate. So I don't know how much of that is true. Uh, and and what else? And like I say, mainly 44 mag, but it's also available in 45 Colt. I have never owned one. I uh, don't think I've ever shot one until this week, and uh, it's just not have not had a lot of experience with it. It's uh, it, I know that's hard to believe since I really like 44 Magnum, 44 Special, but it just one just never came my way for some reason. You know, even when they were normally priced, and now certainly uh, since they're really expensive and kind of collectible, I probably uh, am not as interested in them. You know, for for that, but uh, I, I still prefer the Smith. Uh, is the for the feel on a revolver. I just can't help it. You know, I don't own any stock in Smith and Wesson. I just uh, I just like the the feel of a Smith better in the operation. But again, as you know, uh, recently I had to had to have a Python again. They're, they're just such beautiful firearms, and, and this is a good looking firearm. I mean that rib barrel. You know that I don't care what <laughs> kinds of firearms you like or shoot a lot of. Those ribbed barrels, that Colt ribbed barrel, the Python or on this, or the, uh, you know, where they could the diamond back, it's just cool. It's just off the scale, really. Just really nice. Just uh, dresses up the old, the old revolver, doesn't it? All right, we got a couple more things to shoot here, like a bowling pin. Boom! Oh, I forgot I had uh, magnums in there. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> so it took two shots. Does that mean it was a spare? Did a strike? Well, uh, let's put another hot one over there on something maybe. Like, uh, I'll try that pig right in the middle. Yeah. Got a nice trigger. I, it got off a little early on me there. And I think I have one left for the gong. Boom. Yep, had one. <laughs> so anyway, that's probably enough shooting for this particular revolver. But uh, a lot of requests for this. And, uh, you know, even though I didn't ever buy one and wasn't driven to find one, I, I've always thought they were interesting and thought, well, yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just never had much experience with it. Got a lot going for it. It's a beautiful gun. It's got the red ramp up there and, and everything. Just a nice looking revolver. Very powerful. Uh, again, mainly for hunting, just target shooting. And, uh, you know, one of these collectible, I guess you could say classic or vintage. You know, it's we're getting on to what, 20 years beyond when they were made. So, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. I have seen rumors that Colt's going to maybe make one of these again. I don't know. I didn't think they'd try the Python, but they did. And, and uh, we hope they get the issues worked out with that, and I'm sure they will. Uh, so they have brought back the Python and probably will bring one of these back maybe. I don't know. Well, I shouldn't, shouldn't say probably. I, I don't know what to expect from Colt. But uh, anyway, I'm glad uh, to try one of these out. Yeah, I'm really glad that you all came by to take a look at it. Because you know, that just sort of makes my day. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. 
and also ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastol.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.